BMW makes a great car. There are, however, some complaints relating to the use of plastic in the cooling system. For example, the radiator has some plastic pieces in it, and then there's the thermostat housing, and then there's the impeller on the water pump. A lot of times it's made out of plastic or a similar material. Now those plastic pieces can become brittle and break and cause a lot of problems. So a lot of owners like to replace those pieces before they create trouble. There are a lot of options relating to the water pump. For example, you could use an OEM unit, or you can sometimes even save money with a unit that has a steel impeller, or you can upgrade to a Stuart High Performance unit. We're going to go to the cooling system in a 1997 BMW M3. It has about 80,000 miles on it, and we're going to replace a lot of those components. With a few simple tools and a little bit of know-how, you can do it too. Before you start draining the coolant, you want the uh, heater valves to be open. So turn the key on. Don't start the motor, but turn the key on and turn the uh, heat all the way up uh, on both sides of the car. And that'll open up the valves for the heater. The first place to start draining the fluid is on the side of the engine block you'll see there's a drain plug uh, not very conveniently located behind the O2 sensor in this case uh, but I'm going to remove that O2 sensor to get access to the drain plug and I'm going to plug that I'm going to cover up that hole in the exhaust before we actually start draining. Position a bucket or some kind of receptacle underneath the drain plug and then you might want to use some kind of pan underneath as well because this is going to get messy. As you pull the drain plug, be prepared to adjust the pan as necessary. See it gets kind of messy, not a whole lot you can do about that. The next step is to drain the radiator with the plug that's on the bottom end of the driver's side. And as you pull the plug, you'll see that you also have to, it's not quite as messy, but you have to be prepared to uh, adjust the bucket as it drains. To get the fan off, it helps to have a couple of tools. First of all, a 32 millimeter wrench. And then it also helps to have this uh, spanner tool that attaches to the bolts on the water pump down here to help hold the water pump. Now it's important to note that a couple of things. First of all, these bolts are not in a square pattern. They're in a rectangle. And so it'll help you to figure out which bolts properly go in these holes here. The second thing is to play with the orientation of the pump to get the tools in an optimal position. And the third thing to note is that the threads are left-handed, so you actually want to turn to the right to loosen it. Once you loosen it, sometimes it takes the help of a, of a hammer a little bit, but once you loosen it, just simply turn the fan until it comes off and let it safely come to rest in the shroud. Make sure that you don't damage any part of the uh, radiator. After you've removed the air box and the uh, cruise control unit and then there's a couple pieces in here you need to remove, then take the screws out and there's a couple in here as well. Take the screws out that hold this plastic piece on and slide that out. To get this fan shroud or some people call it a fan frame out, you'll have to uh, take out these plastic push pins on either end and then you'll also have to remove this hose for the overflow. Then when you're able to move the fan shroud around, you can get the fan itself out. After you get the fan off, it's a lot easier to get the driver's side belt off, which you'll need to do in order to get to the water pump. Uh, it'll help you if you first study the path of the belt and make a crude little sketch to show you uh, how to put it back on. You'll save, your, you'll save yourself some hell and heartache that way. Uh, but first you'll have to remove the passenger side belt to take off the driver's side belt. The path of the passenger side belt is a lot simpler, so you don't need to make a sketch. Removing it is very simple. Uh, just simply attach your wrench to the top bolt of the tensioner and then give it a clockwise turn to compress the tensioner and then you can get the belt off pretty easily. 
To remove the driver's side belt, put a hex tool in the bolt of the tensioner pulley and then turn it clockwise to compress the, pull, the tensioner and then you can take the belt off. To get the fan shroud the rest of the way out of the way, you'll have to remove uh, the plug-in to the sensor for the overflow level, and then you'll also have to remove this hose. Remove the two main radiator hoses simply by loosening the hose clamps. Unlatch the radiator clip by inserting a screwdriver and opening it up. Uh, we have a more detailed look at the radiator clips in another video. After you remove the clip to this sensor, then you'll be able to pull the radiator out. On each side of the radiator, on the underside, there are these two rubber, there's a rubber foot on each side that is for mounting. You want to take these off and put them on the new radiator. There are four bolts to take off the thermostat housing. There are two below and two above. Uh, there's one, on this car at least, not all the bolts are the same size. Uh, this last one is a larger bolt that shares uh, the lifting lug, the engine lifting lug with this bolt here. So you can take that out, and then you can see there's the thermostat right there. Removing the thermostat can be a bit of a challenge. It can be a little bit stubborn, so you have to play with it sometimes a little bit. Clean these areas thoroughly before you put the thermostat back in or the thermostat housing and check for any pitting that would be in this area that would be the result of electrolysis. To get access to the water pump you'll have to re remove these four bolts just like that, take the pulley off. Then the water pump is taken off with four bolts here. Just like the thermostat housing, the water pump might need a little bit of coaxing as well. A lot of BMWs come with a water pump that has a plastic impeller. Uh, turns out this car had a metal impeller in it, but uh, the water pump's being exchanged for uh, a Stuart high performance unit. Uh, you can see the, the quality of the manufacturer is a little bit higher and uh, a lot of people like to make this trade especially if their car has a water pump with a plastic impeller. When you put the water pump in you'll see that as you put it in it'll go about as far as the o-ring and, uh, and you don't need to force it in just start putting on the nuts and progressively walk it in by tightening uh, each nut and it'll be fine. It's a low, th these are low torque nuts, so refer to your uh, repair manual like a Bentley or Haynes, and I think I used uh, like 10 Newton meters on this one, which turns out to be about 7 foot-pounds. When you put the new thermostat in, uh, if it has a vent hole or an arrow stamped in it, uh, make sure that it's in the up position. A lot of people like to upgrade to an aluminum thermostat housing, which is what we're doing here. Uh, and again, these are low-torque bolts, and so refer to your repair manual. And they're not all the same torque. On this car, this bolt is a little bit bigger, and so it gets a little bit more torque. But refer to your repair manual, and that'll help you out. When you go to reinstall this pulley and line up the bolts, uh, it'll help you to remember that these bolts are not in a square pattern. They're in a rectangle. And so also remember that these are uh, low-torque bolts, so you don't have to crank down on them. Put the radiator in place and then line it up with the clips. Clamp it down. When you reinstall the fan shroud, uh, make sure that all the tabs line up properly at the top and bottom. And then you can put the plastic push pins in. Uh, make sure that that hose is clamped properly and uh, then there's a couple of sensors here to plug back in. When you install the main radiator hoses, pay attention to the orientation of the clamps 
and position them in a way that will be favorable to access in the future. After you've verified that your drain plugs are reinstalled properly and you've put all the hoses back and everything else, then it's time to go ahead and fill with fresh coolant. I'm using uh, BMW coolant and then I'm also using distilled water. Uh, there is some argument as to whether or not distilled water is necessary. A lot of shops just use regular tap water, but distilled water is recommended and because it's inexpensive and readily available, that's what I'm using. Uh, when you get ready to fill, then you want to remove this little plastic screw from here. And then you want to fill slowly, alternating between coolant and distilled water. Fill up the expansion tank slowly, alternating between the two. And then you'll eventually see coolant and air bubbles begin to come out of this little hole here. As you pour, uh, you'll see bubbles coming out of here. And it's going to get messy. Uh, you'll need a drain pan underneath the car. Even if you're pouring slowly, uh, you'll have coolant coming out of here and here until there are no more bubbles coming out. Uh, and then you can replace the plastic screw. Do not over tighten it. After you're done filling, start the car and uh, run it to operating temperature and then let it cool down and open the cap back up. And if you need to add additional coolant, then you can do it then. Uh, there's a cold fill line on the expansion tank. Uh, it's in German, Kalt. And so put it at that line and then put the cap back on and you're good to go. We hope this tip was helpful. We've got plenty of other resources coming your way. You know, it's amazing how much you can get done with a few simple tools and a little bit of know-how.